Hello everybody, this is Ziggy here. So, originally I streamed a guide that we are calling the Popper's Guide, taking you through normal to very hard. And it ended up being much, much longer than I anticipated. If you hear me referencing later in the video, uh, that will be technically not true, as I've split the original VOD into three different pieces to hopefully make it a bit easier for people listening in to find the information that they need. So hopefully you find this guide useful. I hope this spurs conversation into what helps new players. And with that, I'm going to cut back to the original video, and you'll probably be hearing more of post-commentary Ziggy in the future. So everybody, I believe it is now time to finally go into what we are tentatively calling the Pauper's Guide. So we're going to start with a little bit of a disclaimer before we jump into the items. So I wrote some notes at the top, you can read those if you want. But I wanted to be very clear, the intent of this guide is to help you go from normal to ultimate, but not necessarily to the true endgame of ultimate. These are for the players that are just starting out, they're looking for basic things to hunt as they level, or perhaps they don't have access to trading because you're not playing specifically on Affinia. And so if you're looking for items or ways to empower your character on the road to ultimate, that's what this guide is for. I feel like it's kind of a big cop-out in order to just say, pay PDs, solve everything, which is true. You can pay photon drops in order to skip a lot of the hunts of this game. But I feel like that's better suited for a different video where we will talk about, uh, I guess, options to scale to ultimate. But in order to get to that point where you have solid PD gain, in order to get to that point where you're feeling comfortable with your character, we have to establish some sort of baseline. This guide is intended for fresh characters, may or may not know that much about PSO. We're going to try to go through mechanics, both in a technical sense, and try to streamline it a little bit, because there are lots of items in this game, and a majority of them you can ignore. So, I felt like the best way to talk about the best way to get prepared and most powered up for ultimate is your mag. So let's talk about the mag. We have a little image just below the chat. No, it's very busy on the screen. We're, we're going to be looking at two different things for the most part. So there is a little buddy, aka your little personal device, that you can feed different items in order to gain defense, power, dexterity, or mind. These things directly correspond to your character stats. So I wrote out the ratios here. Just a note, unlike traditional levels, your max level is 200, not 100. Certain stats gain more powerfully than others, so you'll see a lot of uh, mag feeding guides mention things like you have a high power score, you have a mind, high mind score, corresponding to your character stats of ATP or the, or the attack points or MST or the mental strength of the character. But generally speaking, as a high level advice, Good guides will not recommend you pump a lot in defense or dexterity since they are 1 to 1 or 2 dex equals 1 attack accuracy. So just keep that in mind as you go through. The one thing I just want to state about it in general is we're going to be breaking down all the other components of this mag as well. So this little thing is on a clock. Every 210 seconds you can defeat it an item. And we'll be going through exactly what to feed it if you've never fed a mag before. But I just want to establish this baseline that this is a thing you want to be feeding as often as possible. Pretty much every two rooms that you clear, maybe three rooms depending on uh, clear speed, you want to go into your, ma your item pack, you want to look at your mag, you want to make sure you A, you have it equipped, B, that you're feeding it, whatever it is you have any downtime at all. This thing adds so much to your stats. I think the best way to visualize it for players that have never played before, essentially every three points in power or every three points in mind is the equivalency of a good level up for your character. So the fact that you could get over 140 points in any particular category, that is your main damage source, either for magic or melee, 
means that if you are not feeding this, you are potentially 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 levels behind where you could have been if you were being more consistent with mag feeding. So I, I want that to sink in because this is probably one of the most important pieces of equipment that you can have. Hello, this is Post Commentary Ziggy here. So I figured it would help to get a visual example of what I'm talking about when feeding the mag or potentially feeding units to the mag or using materials on yourself since they're all done pretty much the same way. So let's pause so we could hit enter the menu by hitting F12 or the home key by default. If we look at the top, we have an item pack. You can see there's a menu literally called mag. So if you want to see your currently equipped mag, it's denoted by that little symbol you can see on the left of the two striker units that I have. If you go up and down, you can see the different stats of the mag. And I wanted to show you that at level 200 for people that haven't seen it before. If you feed something like, let's say a moon atomizer, even though it looks like I should level up since it increases improves potentially the mind score and the deck score. You notice the stats don't move. And you'll notice that you'll get a very quick animation, as in there is no animation. So I would recommend if you're trying to cap synchro and or IQ on a finished mag, you pick something like a soul atomizer, your moon atomizer, or if you're splurging or happen to be playing episode two, where you happen to pick up a lot of them naturally, uh, star atomizers in order to finish maxing your synchro and IQ. Uh, one other thing I don't think I talk about in the traditional guide is you do lose synchro when you die So most likely as you play through the game, it will drastically go downwards towards zero percent Do not worry. It is very easy to fix when it's at max level. Do not worry about it when you're leveling your character so If we go through and use the left right as you can see uh, For any particular mag, you can see the impact of the stats. You can see if I were to unequip this I lose upwards of 200 ATP, a little bit of accuracy. And one additional thing is if you want to know more about the Photon Blasts themselves, since we don't cover them in a lot of detail in this guide, but if you want to see a brief description of each, I highly recommend that as you acquire them, you could go into the Photon Blast menu by just hitting Confirm on the unit that you have, or whatever mag you happen to have. And you can see a brief description of each of them. So I'll just showcase the three that are in basically every mag that we will be talking about, which are the twins, Myla Yula, we have Estella the Dolphin, and we have the Angel Gila. So one additional thing, if you're looking to swap mags, you have to do that in the equipment menu. You just go down to the bottom one and you just confirm to select your particular mag. If I at any point talk about using materials, you could just easily go into items instead. If you have any materials, like a power material, a mine material, you just consume them here. Or if you have the mag equipped that needs a cell, such as something we'll be talking about later, the uh, Rappy Beak, you can use that while you have the mag equipped and it will automatically consume it. Now just keep in mind that there are a lot of different conditions for what items can be used. We'll talk about that just a little bit, but hopefully this will give you a visual representation of what you need to do to upgrade your mag, and also, later on, upgrade your materials. So, um, there are a couple things I want to touch base on in terms of specific to Affinia, not specific to Affinia. So, Affinia offers custom colors for the mags, so I definitely recommend you take a look at their forums and wiki in order to see images of the new colors specific to the server. Uh, so the only way to really find those in general, I would recommend, are Mines, Jungle East, and Mountain Boxes. They will not drop from enemies, typically. And if you are looking for those custom colors, good luck, because you have to hunt for them. However, I'm going to tell you an even easier method for vanilla gameplay in order to get a mag of the color of your choice. Literally as soon as you make your character and you choose the color of the character, that will determine the mag's color. So the game will try to coordinate. If you pick a green outfit, you're getting a green mag. It's it's literally that simple. The game tries to make you somewhat color coordinated by default. So if you want to have a blue or a pink or a more like darker tone color mag, just create a quick character, deposit his mag somewhere that you can reach it. Viola slash voila. <laughs> you have everything that you need in order to do mags. So just keep that in mind. 
Um, we're gonna go through the assumption that you're only making one mag, but I highly recommend that if you're going to make multiple characters, that you try to do as much mag feeding at the same time as possible. So, uh, one thing I kind of glossed over was, uh, there's two stats at the top of any given mag, which is Synchro and IQ. We'll talk about what these do, but I, I want to be very clear, when you're leveling your first mag, these numbers do not matter when you're in the middle of leveling. The only time they are important, I would say in main gameplay, is level 200. <laughs> when, when, when you can level no more, that's what you focus on and you fix. And I think that's a concept that's kind of lost on newer players. Because uh, we have the common question of, okay, it's level 200, but what if my IQ and Synchro are 0%? Don't worry, you can keep feeding it after it's at max level, it just won't gain any more stats. So worry about fixing Synchro and IQ for the end of the game. Usually we do a combination of, uh, I guess, Moon Atomizers slash Soul Atomizers slash Star Atomizers to fix it, for those that are curious. But essentially for those that are more interested in some of the underlying things with this mag. So once your mag levels up enough, it's going to start gaining passive effects of varying strengths. So you just have to kind of think of it as very simply that IQ will improve the quality of something known as the Photon Blast, which is something where as you take damage, deal damage, you build a super meter for the mag to basically unleash the special. And it also impacts things like the passive effects, like if you max out the gauge, something will happen, or if you're reduced to 10% health, what happens? Or if you enter a boss room, what happens? So that'll be more important as you level the mag further for your first 15 or 20 levels. Literally irrelevant, your mag I don't even think has a single passive ability of note. So I put some formula information here. I would say only for veterans, I'm just going to point out one thing when it comes to the damage formula. So one thing to kind of keep in mind is we'll talk about uh, Dolphin or Estella a few different times. This is the only Mag Blast that scales on something other than attack power or mind power. So if you're playing relatively defensive, the Dolphin ends up being a really solid option. I just want to kind of point that out to players in general. So there are several Mag Blasts. Yes, exactly. See, Chris is learning stuff. Yeah, there, it's crazy. There, there's so many weird things that are not explained in this game. Like, for example, the snake, the deer, and the angel. I'm just gonna call them that. No one calls them by their mag names. They call them by what they look like as the icon. Uh, they scale off of your attack power. And then specifically, Layla the mermaid and Milo Yula slash the twins. Don't really care about your stats at all. Your stats could be like literally zero, it wouldn't matter. So I'm just going to talk about and recommend whenever we're talking about feeding patterns. Three mags in particular, mag bless in particular, and I'm going to tell you why they're important. So we mentioned before the dolphin. This thing is essentially a very long range room clear. It is actually the meta way of dealing with certain bosses. In particular, the episode four boss. So I highly recommend you put this on every single mag that you can, and we'll explain how to get to it. So do not worry, because there are a lot of nuances to the mag feeding. So if you're not sure how to get Dolphin, do not worry, slash Stella. We will go over that in just a minute. The second most important one, which I find really weird when I see guides that don't recommend you get this blast, and yes, I have seen them, and yes, they are terrible is something called Myla and Eula, or simply known as the Twins. So, essentially you have Estella, which is your room clear, which is great. It can hit entire rooms, clear entire waves in one shot. It's not dependent on a high stat in particular. So if you have good shields, for example, or decent uh, stats in general, which a lot of the female characters do, the Dolphin will end up doing a lot of damage compared to everything else, but the twins specifically give something known as shift in D-band. So I'm assuming maybe for, the, for those that haven't played Force before, essentially shift is the ATP booster, D-band is the defense booster. Now one thing that makes this incredibly, incredibly powerful is that characters that do not normally have access to shift in D-band, so think about your androids with no mental strength, 
and no TP, suddenly can get a very high level, potentially level 21 in solo play, uh, shift a D-band, which is incredibly powerful for when you're clearing. However, its true power is multiplayer. So this is not applicable to every quest that you do in multiplayer, but is applicable to enough that it is good enough. That if you build enough meter, you build all 100 of a gauge, and multiple players have 100, you could do something known as chaining. So for example, Chris will use Dolphin, because that's his primary, and I as a force might use Myla and Eula. So what will happen is that it will take both of our mag blasts, and it will recognize we donated 200 total meter versus 100 meter. And suddenly that level 21 shifted D band is level 41. Or with three players, it's 61. Or with four players, it's 81. It is incredibly broken given that text cap at 30. So as soon as you have two players, this is kind of like your best possible photon blast. Otherwise, I think Estella slightly edges it out in solo play for people that already have shifted D-Band, for example. Um, however, that doesn't mean that it is not extremely powerful. Now, one other thing that people end up taking is uh, Pila, also known as the Angel. You know what I'll do? I'm just going to put this here. I will not refer to them by their original names. Again, almost nobody calls them by their original names. If someone tells you to just use Angel in a Mag Blast chain, as in both one person starts the Mag Blast, another person then joins in by holding, I believe, just Tab by default in Ifinia, and then hitting one of your action buttons. Uh, yeah, Pe people will just type in Twins or Philia. They're no Most people will not remember the names of the underlying mags, so we'll, we'll move past that point. So, the reason Pila is recommended over the Snake which is the other classic starting option, is that it actually just straight up does more damage. Uh, people believe, at least, yeah, I'll say people believe. People believe this is actually a mistake, that originally Gola was supposed to be the only mag blast that uses this scaling. So Gola, for example, is a very hard to target, basically single target point blank ability that does a lot of damage. But they accidentally gave that thing's power to the angel. So you have the same range as the snake, which curls in a circle around you and hits everything near you. And they applied that to angel, which anti-airs and hits everything around you. So there's no reason to not just take angel over snake. I'll make a note here, so I realize I didn't spell that out. Yeah, people believe that originally it was supposed to scale off of ATA, because apparently there's an unused damage formula within the game. That's just a fun fact. So, I I'm pretty sure it's a bug, but you know what? They never fixed it. It's like a quality. <laughs> uh, I will make a note, though, that for people looking to have pure stats mags, they will not generally have Photon Blasts. And we'll cover that in just a moment. So... I'm looking for... Oh. I think this is what I'm looking for. I'm going to move this slightly higher up. So I'm going to talk about the evolution, I think, before we talk about the mag choices. So one thing that makes the leveling of the mag kind of complicated and why there are whole guides extensive to this in far more detail than what I will go through today is that there are essentially different evolutions that a mag could go under. So if you hear people talking about it's an evolution 3 mag and evolution 4 mag, I'm just going to specify at what level the mag will change. I'll make a note. Mag starts at level 5. That's also a fun fact. Why does it start at level 5? Every mag starts with 5 defense. I, I don't really get why they put it at 5 defense, but whatever. Honestly, it would have been much easier if they left it at 0, to be honest with you. It would actually fix a few characters if they did that, but anyway, that's more of a tangent. So essentially, there are key levels to pay attention to. Those are 10, 35, 50, and 100. When you are holding a mag, it will check certain conditions to see if it can evolve. 
So for the first two evolutions, it's simple. When it when the mag hits level 10, whoever is feeding it determines what it gets. When you're feeding it at level 35, it checks, okay, what's higher? Defense, power, dex, mind. Although I think in this case, I don't think there's any defense formulas now that I say that out loud. So just power, dex, and mind it focuses on. Where the complication comes in is that around level 50, it starts checking not only what character's holding it, but what ID is the character, followed by the order of the stats. So if I'm a green ranger that is holding a power mag, it will be different than a hunter that is blue holding the same mag or a ranger that is potentially white, red, purple, etc. So that's where it starts getting a little complicated. And we're going to try to steer you away from the literally dozens of different combinations and try to cover as much as possible in a very simple matter. And finally, the hardest to get evolution is essentially, think of this. At level 100, if you have, let's say, defense and power equal to 50, and dex and mind combined equal to 50, the game will decide, hey, we're gonna give you a special mag that's better than the evolution three at level 50. And that's about it. It just, it's better if you could do it. There's, there's a reason why there's certain minimum stats added. Basically, it could be, it could be defense and dex is equal to power plus mind. It could be defense and power is equal to dex plus mind. All sorts of combinations. And then to make it even more confusing for new players, it still checks what character's holding it, and it checks what ID is using it. So I'm going to be very, very specific when I talk about leveling characters. It is very, very important you pay attention to the character class and ID in order to do this. So I'm going to put one caveat. If you miss the criteria at level 50, and you miss the criteria at level 100, every 5 levels from level 50 and every 10 levels from level 100, it will check the conditions again. If you satisfy those conditions, then what it will do is it will change the mag. So for example, if I if I at level 50 have fed it with a green ranger, and then at 55 I give it to a female pink force as an example, that will potentially change the mag. So I just want people to be aware. Mags are complicated, we're going to try to make it as simple as possible. So let's look at a very small subset of the dozens of mags that are available. And we'll talk about why they are popular choices, and we're going to talk about how you level those particular character uh, choices. So the two meta endgame ones without using any special items, these are ones that you could do regardless if you're in Affinia or in the GameCube. Nidra, Sado. That's it. There is only two that are meta. There are obviously a whole bunch of ones people will pick for purely aesthetic reasons. So let's break down why these two mags by default are the most picked and the most chosen mags. So Nidra happens to look like a scorpion. That's the easy way to tell if somebody has a Nidra mag. And essentially, not only does it level very easily and very quickly, since every single mag has their own growth chart. Yes, this is very complicated. Um, <laughs> but it has invincibility. Think of a note here. Invincibility in all mag trigger areas. Boosted invincibility chance in boss rooms. So what does that mean? So by default, I believe it's a 50% chance for something to trigger for fourth evolution mags that we're talking about. I want to be very specific. However, specifically for Nidra, specific to Nidra. Now this could apply to some other mags, I will denote it. If you ever look at the charts in Affinia, you'll see a little plus icon or a minus icon. So if it has a plus icon, it will take that base rate of 50% and then add, based on your synchro, up to 35% extra trigger. So technically, if you're feeding a Nidra mag and you're at the end of the game in a 200% synchro, there is an 85% chance when you enter a boss room, you will be invincible for 30 seconds. Which, when you hear it out loud, pretty good. In practice, it's a little more neutral. Welcome, George Glass. 
And I just want people to be aware that that is why people choose the Nidra Mag. It is incredibly powerful. You can't go wrong with it. Now, the other common choice that people do is Sato, which is a cat. It doesn't have the boosted boss uh, room invincibility. And it also is slightly weaker invincibility when you hit 100 PB. However, it has probably the most important trigger, which is invincibility when you're hit low. And of course, chat, I have to say, there is a major reason people pick this over the Nidra. It's a cat. People love the cat. I don't, I don't know what to tell you, chat. <laughs> so sometimes it's not just purely meta reason. Sometimes it's simply a cat. Therefore, people will pick the mag. That's why these are the two most chosen endgame mags, which are Evolution 4 mags. Now, Affinia gives you access to a whole bunch of kits and cells that potentially also produce a really strong mag. So I'm going to just list, a again, a very small portion of them and why they're chosen. So you'll see a very common one of Talesius. Let me see if I can pop some of them up on screen, actually. Let me do quick back here but essentially Tulesius is slightly stronger than the default of Nidra where instead of a 50% base chance it has a 55% base chance that's kind of a weird look to it let me see if I can pop it up on screen here it kind of looks like multicolor wings I guess is the best way to put it it also has a niche use with Excalibur. If you're holding Excalibur, which is a weapon you will not find basically in base PSO, but in Blue Burst and beyond, it gives you 10% extra attack speed, 10 light resistance, and 10 dark resistance, which isn't bad. This will pop up Nidra so people know what I'm talking about here. There's your little Scorpion buddy. And briefly, we will show Sato. So we'll leave it on Sato, because Sato is popular. I need pictures, I don't know them by name, yeah. No problems, Chris. Thank you for the good luck. So those are the, the I would say, the three core ones. Delucius is slightly better for things like clearing tower, or particularly hard areas that require, when low on health, trigger invincibility. So people will tend to prefer that one over the above two options. Uh, however, it is much worse at boss trigger invincibility, so I feel, generally speaking, it's not used as much, if given the choice, on things like boss rush. So I just wanted to put like a little note there for people that were curious about when to use certain mag combos. One additional thing are the different kits, and they basically have the same bonuses, I would say, as the other mags. So one thing you'll realize as you go through the different characters is that different character classes need different stats in order to max said character. So unfortunately, what we were talking about before of hitting the fourth evolution where power or, you know, like defense and dex is equal to power plus mind, those kinds of things. There are characters that, that don't actually need that much dex and that causes a problem. So I, I would say offhand, we'll get to it in a moment, but offhand I want to say characters like the Ramar in particular do not need 45 decks. So without having one of these kits, without having one of these bonus items, it's harder to... Actually, we're going to say needs dragon skill. I think we... I'm gonna make this a bit more accurate since we're here. There we go. So technically the item name is Dragon Scale, not Tulesius. Tulesius is the bag. But where I'm getting with the point is that you can feed a beginning mag an item like a kit in order to bypass some of the painful parts of leveling. PSO kind of scales how fast you level somewhere between evolution three and four. Where Evolution 3 tends to take forever to get out of compared to the later evolutions. And by feeding it one of these kits that you could find in the game, which again, we will discuss where to find these, uh, you could skip that really long, slow, and painful process of getting there. You need a kit for the Rappy Mag? Indeed you do. I 
just realized I don't think I have that here. One moment. I talk about it later in the guide, so we'll put one. It'll be... Leave the item is called Rappy Beak. Requires... Uh, use for pure MST mags. See below feeding suggestions. Good point, chat. Good point. So essentially what this will also allow you to do is that you can just very quickly level up a new mag, in particular one that's mostly pure statted, where you don't care about photon blasts, you just want raw stats. So using one of these will make it much easier, I would say, on the player. Actually, we'll just leave it there. Um, the other one that can come up as part of this is so neat to Let's make sure to grab the item name one second as I fix this. No problems, no problems. <clears throat> I just want to make sure this is accurate. So some of this stuff, again, I jumbled the notes around, so do apologize that I'll be touching this as we go through. But essentially, um, all of these recommended mags, with the exception of Rappy B, We are purely using it because it gives invincibility when low on health and when entering boss. Those are probably the two most important ones to receive. It being on 100% PB is nice, but not required. But there are a lot of meta strategies when hit low on health and on boss triggers that becoming invincible is incredibly, incredibly powerful. Especially if you're playing something like I mentioned before, Tower in Episode 2, where enemies will literally reduce you to one health as part of an attack. It would be nice if, when they hit you to one health, that you also just had invincibility afterwards. So if you're wondering why people choose these, all these are basically that reason. Easier feeding, invincibility triggers, solid. Generally speaking, I don't recommend the kits over Nidra. Because Nidra is simply better from a stat perspective, but if people don't care about having the little bonus percentage on bosses, they're doing more casual exploration than boss rush, I don't think it matters that much. I think whatever you decide from the meta standpoint. I think that's all I'm looking for. So I'll, I'll point out uh, two additional ones that I would say are more niche. They're very specific to characters, where things like Rappy Beak are applicable to all forces, and I would not really call that, call that niche whatsoever. There's some that are specific to two classes, like the Striker unit, for example. Um, show an image of this. So it kind of looks like a goofy backpack, I guess is the best way to put it. And by using the Heaven Striker coat, what that will end up doing is it enables a special attack. And only if you're playing Ranger is this relevant. Otherwise, with the triggers of all Resta, let me scroll slightly further down so you can see. Um, with the triggers of Resta, not really good. Not recommended. Even with the trigger rate, base percentage of 50%, not good. If you need to heal, use items. Don't don't do mag triggers that heal. Just just don't. These are excellent loans. Do you make them available? We'll be adding adding them, I think, to the Discord once we're done with this. So we'll just be going through. If things need to get touched up, we'll clean it up as we go. So I definitely want to make sure people that are interested in this can get this information. So I'll be posting uh probably after we're done recording this video where to receive it. But it should be on our Discord ultimately after we're done here. So one other thing I want to talk about, and I'm going to give credit to Hellcleave here in particular, who's a frequenter of the stream. Uh, there's another way to create a pure mind mag without leveling any points in defense. And there are a whole bunch of items, the Mark III, the Master System, the Genesis, the Dreamcast. Essentially, you're evolving them through the Sega consoles. If you give them this item, let me go to this, see if we can get it to pop up.
The only requirement for this is you have to be level 60 plus, and it applies to a basic mag. If all you want is pure mental strength, this is technically the best option for you. However, there are huge drawbacks with this. Open. Thank you, the Emblem Hero, for following. There are huge drawbacks to this. It has no triggers of invincibility, and it gets no photon blasts. Now, that might not be a game breaker because uh, forces like to have pure mind mags in order to learn techniques faster. Maybe they use another one for combat slash exploration. But I just want to open those options up for people that are interested in just power leveling. This is an example of a very niche choice, but potentially useful. So, I mentioned before that there are requirements of a combination of class and ID. So before you begin feeding your mag, I recommend two of these classes at minimum, regardless of who you're playing. You create a ranger that is green, blue, pink, orange, or white, since all of those IDs form the same mag. And then depending on whether you want to go Nidra or Sato, you have a male force of the corresponding ID, or a female force of the corresponding ID. Now, from my perspective, when I went through and I leveled my mag, and I think I mentioned it below later in the guide, I made a red force. You don't have to make a male red force, but for those that are curious, that's what I'm assuming for later portions of the guide. Otherwise, if you're looking to make Sato, just please note, it is very important when they are level 100, that the person feeding it to hit level 100 is that character class of that ID. So I think what we'll end up doing is uh, we'll probably include an ID calculator in the YouTube cliff notes, and I'll probably retroactively add it to the notes. But it's very important that you have those IDs or else it just will not work as intended. So we'll talk one more time about basic tips while leveling. Generally speaking, avoid leveling defense. Avoid overcapping on decks. Take as little as needed the class. So this, this goes all over the place. So I just gave a couple of quick examples here. We'll be going through class by class breakdown just so that the chat is aware if they want to see those recommended numbers. Uh, we will go through those, but the the idea being that Hunters and Rangers want somewhere between, let's say, 43 and about 55, where there are some specific character classes that want as high as 103. Now, what I recommend... Yeah, I also mentioned Rocket Seal is one of those characters that can't do the normal level-ups, but what I do recommend is that even if they have an odd number, like really high above 45 number of decks, do not worry about hitting above that number until you get past a certain level. So I've included here a breakdown of how I fed my mags when I first started the game, which was many, many years ago. So definite apologies if it's a little rough in terms of the feeding instructions. So essentially, uh, I found one way of leveling mags that I just found incredibly useful regardless if it was a power mag or mind focus mag. The reason being is that if you look at later on, the recommended stats of a mag, usually it is some combination of mind or power, even for forces. And so even if I'm making a end game, best in slot, min max style kind of mag, I will still make it a power mag first, because leveling this is much easier than the alternative. So I'm going to throw that out there for people that are making more than one character, that you can still level them with the same approach of the power mag, as long as you're conscious of not going over the recommended power. So just put that as a little, little cliff note, we're going to refer to that in just a little bit. But I found that I made pretty much 90% of my mags this way. So you take your basic mag, which starts at level 5, you feed it antidotes. What does that do? That gives you a combination of dex and power. Once it goes to just before level 10, you hand it over to a ranger. The reason you want to do this, you get the Estella Photon Blast. So now at level 10, it'll evolve into a mag called Kalki. So I'll show you what it looks like.
Do you see this little thing here? You might notice that has a couple of triggers, but not too many. It's just kind of okay. So what you'll end up doing is you'll keep feeding this thing antidotes over and over and over again. So it's going to add a little bit of power, a little bit of uh, dexterity. In fact, let me hide the notes just for a second just so chat can see what I'm also referring to. Let's hide the notes for a second. So for any given mag, especially on the Affinia site, there is a combination of items that impact the synchro and the IQ. If you're ever curious how to check it, just look back upon these. But essentially, what I'm trying to do so that you're not looking at this chart 24-7, is I'm trying to give a recommendation of stats where you are constantly leveling dex as much as possible while leveling your primary stat just a little bit. So this is going to be very dex focused, so you're going to get more accuracy until it hits level 35. So if dex is the highest when you level it and it hits 35 and it was previously a Kalki, it turns into something called a Mitra. So this will give it one of the other mag blasts that we're looking for, which is Angel, which you can see here, also known as Pila. But from that standpoint, it's going to level very, very, very slow. I'm going to warn you, it is it is kind of painful to get out of this little slump. These deceptively low level ranges between 35 and 99 are absolutely brutal. They are much slower than when you were leveling from 5 to 34. Just be aware of that if you're making a new character. This is kind of like the trudging through molasses stages of leveling the mag. So one thing I want to take it advantage of is that if you continue leveling this and you get all the way to 50 and you've been feeding it antidotes if you're following the guide or excuse me you've been feeding it anti-paralysis if you're following the guide at level 35 or if you gave it to somebody else because let's say in the beginning you didn't want dolphin and you gave it to another hunter or something it might be maruda or ashvenu but i don't recommend i don't recommend those i'll just make a cliff note for people that did that that's what you feed I don't recommend that. But let's say you've now fed it from Mag to Kalki to Mitra. It should turn into a Katiba, I think it's called. Which, it just means that you have Dex is greater than Power is greater than Mind. I believe is the stat formation of what you need there. Double checking. Yes. Plus, because you gave it to a Green Ranger, assuming you were following the ranger that you created up here, then you will receive the Myla and Eula Mag Blast. And now you have all of the Mag Blasts needed for that particular mag, so it is done. If it happens to evolve again because you give it to some other character for leveling, it doesn't matter. You will not lose those bonuses, so do not fret if at 55 you gave it to a different character because your main person playing is not a ranger. It's okay. It has all the mag blasts. It's locked in. You can't really mess it up from there. I'll put it that way. So if you leave it as this particular one by giving it back to that green, blue, etc. ranger, then your goal between levels 51 and 99 is hitting that perfect ratio. So the ratio you're looking for is 5 defense, 45 power, 45 dex. So I provided items here. If you're trying to level its power, you give it diamates. If you're just trying to level... Uh, dexterity, give it antidotes. So if you don't want it to form swap, so for example, you don't want to keep feeding it on your ranger and you want to keep it as simple as possible so you don't need to look up other feeding charts, just give it back to the ranger every time it's about to hit 55, 60, 65, 70, and technically it will remain the same form all the way through. Now, I mentioned earlier that depending on what mag you're looking for, Take a look at these combinations that you're looking to receive, and just make sure that if you want to have a Sato at level 100, if you have 5 defense, 45 dex, and 50 power, let's say, that you feed it at level 100 with the female force. If you're looking to do a Nidra, which is more what I would recommend in terms of mid-max, I recommend at level 100 of 5 dex, or excuse me, 5 defense, 45 dex, and 50 power, 
that you give it to a Viridian, blue, red, or white horse that is male. It's very specific. They also have to be male. Once you do that, you're at, you're home free. If you if you have the Nidra Mag, it is incredibly easy to level. It basically feeds as quickly as though you had given it a kit or a cell. So we're now back to leveling what felt like levels 5 to 9, or even potentially level 10 onwards, where it only really requires 3 or 4 items most of the time in order to level. And that means you are going to be gaining an insane amount of power. So depending on your class, you'll slowly determine how much power you should get. So we'll get to that in a moment. But that's that's the thought process, regardless of what ranger, hunter, force you're playing. If you're looking to just make a quick min-max... Not say max now, we'll say min-max. <laughs> Um, that I find that this feeding formula is the easiest to follow. It requires the least number of handoffs. Um, I think I mentioned even in my class video previously, there's a reason I recommend going Ranger first, aside from the fact that they don't need a lot of money to get started. It's because they have access to so many Mag Blasts. So if you have a Raw Cast, if you have a Raw Mar, you have a Raw Marl that you want to solo with, you could get all the money you need for your Force or Hunter alternate characters, and fix their mags and create the mags at the same time. So if you're wondering why I mentioned that in the other video, this here is why. It simplifies the feeding process. Now, we mentioned before there was a recommended uh, mag to create, which was Toulousius with the dragon scale. So how does that change the feeding instructions? Funny enough, you feed it exactly the same way from levels 5 to 50. So nothing changes. You still need the green ranger, you still need to give it to a ranger at level 10. And then all you need to make sure is that you give it to a different ID ranger. So this is one of the alternate forms. So you could use the one from before, you can make a new one, but essentially once you've given it the same feeding pattern, the same ranger from level 50, at level 55, 60, 65, it's going to be checking for this combination Power has to be greater than dex has to be greater than mind. So by default, dex will probably be about 25 points higher than power. So probably closer to level 80, level 85. This formula will kick in. So if you've been feeding it to this other ranger, who's Viridian, Sky, Purple, Red, it'll go from the Katiba to a Kama. That is the requirement to get to Lucius. You feed it the dragon scale at that point, and then you continue leveling it. Now I just want to make sure... I'm going to look at its feeding chart real quick. Let's make sure to inform the players what is the best way to feed it, so I'm just checking. So, I would recommend, based off of this, power, you would still feed it Dimate, nothing changes there. Or Dexterity, you'll still give it an Antidote, so that also didn't change. And then for Mind, you give Dye Fluid. Oh, it uses the same feeding formula as Nidra, that's convenient. Literally the same table. Nice. That makes things easy. It doesn't really matter if you're doing an Idro or a Toulousius. You feed it the same thing in the endgame. So here's the more complicated one. So let's say you want to level a Force. And this is your first time character. I don't recommend leveling like this, but I know this is what I did while playing. So that way I could keep a uh, mind-based mag before I had access to the kits, before I had access to anything else. So instead of going with Antidote, which gives Dexterity and Power, with Dexterity being the focus, I went Anti-Paralysis, which gives Dexterity, but also a little bit of Mind. It's, it's very similar in that sense. So in the same process, I feed it until it hits level 10. At level 10, I have to make sure that that level 10 is acquired by a ranger feeding it to level 10 specifically that way we could get a stella so nothing really changes too much here uh we're gonna keep feeding it anti-paralysis in order to keep pumping up dexterity and as long as you give it to a ranger at level 35 you'll gain pila so not not much has really changed here however where it will change is that because your mind score is higher than power 
and Dex is higher than all of those, it doesn't evolve into the right mag when it hits level 50. So instead of going and becoming the Kativa normally at level 50, <coughs> it'll transform into something called the Bereva. So I'm just going to briefly put that on screen. So you might notice that this mag has another angel icon. So Pila, aka the angel, was gained twice. Fear not, that was on purpose, because as long as you don't learn another Photon Blast, it will not fill up the three slots that you have for Mag Blasts. So essentially what you end up doing is you need to keep feeding it over and over and over and over again until Mind is greater than Dexterity. So what I would recommend at this point is I'm hoping that you picked a force that's either green, blue, pink, orange, or white. Because then from that point forward, and I highly recommend for first-time force players, probably pink ID. Particularly if you're playing alone. Um, you can give it back to your force to level from 50 to 99. And what'll happen is that you'll keep feeding it, you'll keep feeding it, you'll keep feeding it, you'll keep feeding it. And what will happen is that once the mind is greater than dexterity, it's going to turn into the Isla Mag, and you'll finally get Milo Eula. Now keep in mind, this is very slow, in particular compared to the Power Mag. So I know some people suggest skipping Milo Eula, so that way you don't have to do the slower feeding. However, I think it's worth the extra, like, hour or hour and a half it takes to level the Mag, comparatively. Just because Milo Eula is such a strong Photon Blast, that I feel like I would be cheating you if I told you just to get like a ghoul, a gola, slash the deer, mag blast. So that's what I went through. It was it was absolute suffering. Just want you to know. It levels extremely slowly, and I just realized I don't have what you need to feed it. Give me one second. Let's see, for more mind. On a Bereva specifically, you would have to feed it... I'm gonna say Difluid or Monofluid if Mesetta. If Strapped or Mesetta. The only difference between it is one point. So you need to feed 10 Monofluids in order for it to level once or... Uh, a little under 10, like 9.8 or something weird dye fluids. So it's it's not a huge difference between them. I don't think it's a big time loss either way. And monofluid is much cheaper. Anyway, just want to put that there for people that are interested in it. So once it finally becomes the right combination where mind is greater than dexterity, similar to before, you need to make sure that you have 5 defense, 45 dex. So that equals the number that you need. This should be 50 mind. One second. I'm scrolling up and checking my own notes. Defense, power, plus mind. Yeah, so we'll, we'll probably do the power plus mind again. So I'm going to recommend 50 mind. Based off of that recommendation. Fix that. So, they use the same formula in order to make Nidra or Sato, and because you're doing 45 dex, which is the lower amount plus defense equals the other scores, you could go from Nidra or you can make a Sato, depending on your choice, and then you level them the same way. Now, there's one additional way you can level a mag. I know we've been go going on about mags, but mags are the most important thing in the game, to be honest with you, outside of equipment. Um, there's a much easier way of getting basically a pure mind mag. And essentially all you do, once you have a Rappy Beak, you start a brand new mag, you feed it nothing but monofluids. You keep feeding it monofluids, you keep feeding it monofluids, you keep feeding it monofluids. You give it to a ranger at level 10, so that way it learns Estella. It's here just for clarity for people that might have skimmed ahead. And then generally if you're going for a pure mind mag, you don't super care about having every mag glass possible. So I'm just giving the two meta ones. So you just keep feeding monofluids until level 35. 
then you'll be able to gain uh, Milo and Eula as long as it's held onto a ranger. Now, because you've been feeding it nothing but mono fluids, it will gain 15 defense, which is not great. However, this now means that the other 185 points from level 35 onwards will be only mined. So you at this point will continue to feed mono fluids, and because it's evolved, that no longer increases defense. And essentially, you just level it until it is at least level 50. You can swap out who's holding it level 50 if you really want a third mag blast. I don't recommend it. It's not really required. Typically, you will be only using Estella and Milo and Eula, but for those that are curious, you can give it off to another character to get the deer. I bless if you really want it. Honestly, even with having it, I still don't use it. And once it hits level 50, you can give it the Rappi's Beak. And then you just feed it dye fluids until the end of time, and it levels incredibly quickly, as in like five items or less in order to level up, as opposed to the 10 or 11 mono fluids that we mentioned earlier in order to go from the painful, painful leveling process of the other mag. So at that point, you'll have an extreme amount of power, and you will have a nice little backup mag if you're doing new forces. So I just kind of made a quick note for people that weren't sure, they don't want to look up their character stats. If you want to have a generic leveling mag, you just have like 5 defense, 150 power, 45 dex. You want a pure mind mag, Rappi, it'll be 15 defense because you fed it all those mana fluids and 185 mind, or it'll have 45 dex and 150 mind. Those are the generic mags if you don't want to be bothered to look up your max stats. Those are the end numbers to look for. But now we're going to go into more technical details. This is probably more important to look at when you're leaving very hard mode. I don't think this will be relevant while you're going from normal to ultimate. It's very unlikely, unless you are really doing bizarre hunts, that you will max your mag before you hit ultimate. I'm not going to say it's impossible, it's just not likely. But for those that happen to be in that situation, or they have, uh, as I said before, they're making a new character that may or may not require different sets of mags. I've listed uh, what I'll consider Aphinia's meta for min-max. Essentially, they take a certain power score. Let me break down the stats. It'll be defense, power, dex, mind, for the breakdown of the mag. And essentially, they leave defense at 5, as usual. And then from there, for hunters, they'll try to get as much power as possible and as little mind as possible. And that is the philosophy in order to create the different endgame mags. Now, I mentioned before, there's a couple characters that do not want 45 decks, so it is not possible for you to tap their accuracy and power simultaneously without using a special unit. So we mentioned before at level 100, somebody has to hold it when it has 45 dex, 5 defense. Well, if your character caps at only 35 dex, that's kind of a problem. So this is where you need to start hunting for those cells, and we'll talk about in just a little bit where to get some of those cells. Skip the vocals on this. As much as I like this song, go through the vocals. So here are just the stat numbers for people that are just looking to make a basic mag. I will say that Faux Newmans and Faux New Worlds are a little more complicated than some of the other characters because there is the concept of Episode 2 is very difficult and you don't want to spell cast in Episode 2. You actually just want to use strong weapons throughout. So they have what will be considered like a tank mag and what would be considered more of a... I guess a blasting mag. So what people will end up doing is they'll swap in things that improve their accuracy and or their ability to land status ailments. So you'll hear us talk about the V units for those that are curious that has to do with that. So what will end up happening is that late game phone humans and phone neurals will change their mag depending on the episode. For people just starting out, it's not as important. So one thing I want to draw attention to one last time before we move away from mag discussion and move on to other things 
is that while well, hunters and rangers are fairly straightforward, like you want only the accuracy needed to hit max accuracy at level 200 of your character, and the rest goes to power, uh, there are some kind of oddball characters like the Fomar and the Fo Newman and the Fo Newral, whose mags will get a mixture of power and mind. So while these are really great mags for when you're at the end of the game, I really, really recommend if you're playing a force in particular that you create another mag specifically while leveling your character. So either go for 45 dex and 150 mind, or if you happen to get the Rappi's Beak because you have access to episode 4 on Affinia when it's not a very hard item to attain, that you get 185 mind and 15 defense for when you're playing the force. Because this will make your life a lot easier. Do not suffer and try to beat the game at like level 90 with a 88 power mag as a force. That doesn't make any sense. So please, I highly recommend if you're playing a force to consider making a pure mind mag for those situations. And you can slowly level your level 200 mag. But honestly, until you get to those final 5 or 10 levels needed to level... It's better to just have one that is purely in the stat of your choice. Rather than going through and trying to suffer with the min-max stats. So that's all I'll say on mags. Sort of. So, if you're wondering where they come up with these weird numbers for what ends up going into the power and mind of a force in particular, there is another item called materials. This is probably the second biggest factor that helps with making a new character. So materials are basically items that you can use... They're basically one-time use items that boost your stats. If you're playing on Affinia, you can reset your stats at any time with slash mat reset while you're in the lobby, or slash mat count while you're in-game, or in the lobby, and you can see how many materials you've given to a character so far. So, it's not as straightforward as I would have liked, but essentially, you could get up to 125 extra HP and TP materials, which increases the respective stats by uh, 2. And those are separate totals, so if I have 125 HP, I can still have 125 TP. However, that is not true for everything else. So for power materials, defense materials, etc. That 250 pull as a human, or 150 for cast a Newman, is shared between them. So people have to plan out ahead of time what they're going to be putting all their points in. There's a couple different philosophies, I would say, for materials. So... There is the I'm leveling a new character philosophy. So what does that mean? So if you're playing, if you've played on a higher difficulty and you're just looking to make another character, you probably have an abundance of materials since they are more common as you go higher in difficulty. So they will literally take the 250 materials for humans, for example. They'll take 28 or 35 luck, depending on their items. And literally everything else goes in power. Because for every... I'm going to say generally every one point in mind slash power is two to characters that. So what will end up happening is that if you take those 200 something other materials and all you do is put them in power, suddenly you're starting the game off instead of being at like 60, 80, 90 ATP at level 1, at level 1 with all those materials you suddenly have 400 ATP to start, so you're doing hundreds of extra damage. So for people just looking to purely level as fast as possible, and they're looking to come in with a not quite as fresh character, it will probably follow the important stat philosophy. So there's no reason to even <laughs> list out what each character needs. It's literally pick 28 or 35 luck, everything else is power, or everything else is mind kind of stats. So that's important stat philosophy. Uh, we'll be going over the min-max philosophy, which is in combination with your mag, you want to pick as many points as possible so you cap out in power and mind, aka your damage stats, while trying to get as close as possible with defense and evade. Now this might not be possible for all characters to max stats, but by ensuring we have a certain minimum amount of luck, 
which normally caps at 100 total. Um, you'll you'll get as close as possible. I don't recommend going for a max stat approach, because generally speaking, you want to free up as many slots in your armor as possible. And if you don't know what that is, don't worry, we'll be talking about that. Um, but essentially, this is just making it sh making sure that you have as much flexibility in the late game. I guess this is the easiest way of putting it. So I've included a resource for uh, if you want to see what your character's status is as you go through, uh, you can check the link later. I also included before, if you're leveling a mag and you want to see what happens by feeding in different items and you want to learn yourself because you're a more visual learner, I've also included a link for a mag feeder simulator, which is amazing. If you're not sure if something will work, you can consult that as you play, and that is regardless if you're on Affinity or not. Enjoy that. And finally, I will say there's one additional approach, which is hybrid. So what do we mean by hybrid? So if we take a look, let's just say at the Humar. The Humar, if we looked previously, has a power mag. So they have 147 power, 48 dex, zero mind. They have a pretty solid mag. However, if you truly just want to do as much damage as possible and you don't care about your mental strength, which a lot of people do not when they play this game, what you'll end up doing is you'll take what would be considered min-max. So you'll take a look at the Humar, and you'll say, Ooh, I have 52 mine materials I have to use. You're like, what if instead of doing that, I just took those 52 mine materials, and instead just took 52 additional power materials? So what this will mean is that you have to switch your mag a little bit, since the stats of the power and mine from the materials are interchangeable with the mag stats. Because ultimately, you're just trying to reach a cap. Whether you do that with the mag or whether you do it with materials is mostly subjective at that point. So the reason people might want to choose that over min-max, which is, I would say, not meta to do, is that you could, for example, take 125 power, 69 defense, 28 evade, 28 luck, and at level 200, if you take their mag, which is 147 power, subtract the 40, not 42, subtract the 52, uh, mine materials. You got rid of 52 mine materials here. Subtract 52 from power and add 52 to the humor mag. You'd end up at the same stat total. So the question might be, why would you do that? The reason you might want to do that, if you're looking to be as conservative and level as quickly as possible for your first time character, as an example, you could just eat as many power materials as you can. And you could keep a backup mag, which is a pure power mag, or it might even be the same mag that you would have done normally for min-max. And you can use that for leveling, and only when you're on your final 10 levels do you go, Oh, okay, now that I've offset my materials by 52 mine materials, and I have 52 in mine versus uh, 0 for my final mag, I could put that mag on for my final 10 or 15 levels of the game, and still hit max stats. But unlike the other characters as you play through, I will hit my cap sooner than if you're purely going through min-max stats, and I don't need to reset my materials, which is important if you're not playing on Affinia and you do not have the command to reset ma your materials. Because generally speaking, if you're playing on GameCube, if you put a material in, it's locked in forever. So if for some reason you end up we'll say messing up your feeding plan and you end up with slightly more power or slightly more mine, you could kind of compensate by taking that out of the mag. So just want people to be aware of that. Your character is not quote-unquote ruined if that happens. There's ways you can fix it and still be at the same max stat total. So just want to draw an underline emphasis that your character is not over if you accidentally put one point higher in power in mind. You could try to offset it in materials or offset it in the mag, depending on which one is capped. So this is only really applicable to a few different characters, so I just applied that to the Humar, the Hunumaral, the Ramar, and the Ramaral, because casts do not care about mine material, so they're out. You don't have to worry about them for that strategy. And for faux Newmans and faux Numerals, you're taking all mine materials anyway. So that doesn't really... It doesn't really change anything here. I'll put it that way. That does not look correct. Let me change this. There we go. That that looks right to me. <laughs> I think it should be 10 luck and not 10 evade. I think that's correct. 
Yeah, I think that's correct. So, for those looking to determine what their materials they should eat as they play the game, I'm going to leave the charts here. I'm not going to go through them line by line because there's a lot of information. I will denote I'm breaking down whether or not you have access to a mag cell for raw Mars and raw seals due to the fact that they can cap differently. So it will very, very slightly change your plan. Generally speaking, I'd recommend you level with the cell version since it's fairly easy in Affinia to get a cell compared to the GameCube version, for example. So just keep that in mind when you're going through here. Also, I wanted to note that this is not a mistake for the Fomarl. The Fomarl's max stats are much lower than I think they should have been. Honestly, I really wonder if it's a bug. So she's one of the only characters where you have points of leniency. So you have 17 materials you can use for anything. And it doesn't matter what they're in, because you can already cap. <laughs> it's it's very silly. I don't know why she's able to cap her stats so much quicker than every other character in the game. But hey, if you want that as a plus side for your character, just keep that in mind. Fomarl's secret power. You can just do whatever you want with your materials, and it'll probably be okay.